All right, just going to clear out some words I had on my desktop. You know, it's too much, getting too hectic. I'm just going to target the way your dictionary stuff first. For everything else, I don't really care. This is educational. I can review this video in the future. You know, it'll be useful for me. Maybe somebody else, probably not somebody else, but whatever. <laughs> so, orthnohopter, a heavier than air craft. That's, re <laughs> that's a really weird phrasing because it's not like the word aircraft. It's heavier than air craft. So awkward with the dashes and everything. Designed to achieve flight by means of flapping wings. Definitely doesn't work. Great for video games, though. I wish it was in Genshin Impact. Or if my brother and I ever make a game, which we probably won't successfully. Because game development is hella hard. I thought it was way easier before I looked into it. But pff, oh, man, that's a lot of effort. Programming? Oh, my gosh. Okay, maybe... Yeah, that'd be great to have any game shoot bows off of that thing. You know how people ride elephants in video games with the Hannibal and his elephants and elephants panicking through the lines and whatnot. It'd be kind of fun to have in video games, this sort of stuff. Everybody likes vehicles. Everybody loves the mongoose in Halo 3, you know? This is a extra fun vehicle. Be as popular as a banshee, maybe, in Halo 3. Augustine, pertaining to the times of the Roman Emperor Augustus. So this guy, I think, yeah, I remember him literally monetizing his border i think he had towns border towns where the soldiers would station everybody felt safe so a lot of people congregated in that area a lot of businesses started and it got rather prosperous on those border towns i wonder if the prosperity in the border towns incentivized the roman people to like expand their empire because i remember i think livy talking about or maybe it was hardcore history i don't know or maybe it was hardcore history talking about livy <laughs> That the Romans would justify their conquest by saying they're constantly defending themselves because, oh, there's there's heathens. No, there's barbarians outside our borders. we got to deal with that threat. So they'd be like, oh, there's a threat. They defeat the conquer the threats. And those, oh, there's another threat. It's right outside our borders, our new borders. And it keeps on getting bigger and bigger and bigger. And they justify their ever-expanding empire just saying if it's a constant thing of defense, it's a cycle of defense or whatever. I don't I don't remember the details like that. It was something like that. I thought it was absolutely hilarious. So I'm about to look into that. I'll probably listen to Libby audiobook soon or something. Bidenism. So I was about to do Trumpetism and Bidenism because it's Wear Dictionary. I was planning on selling t shirts. I'm like, oh, people are going to buy those Trumpism. And I was too scared to do Trumpetism though because he's way too divisive. Albeit, Bidenism's really bad too, I know. But <laughs> they're both pretty bad. I think everybody can agree with that, right? If you're in the gray area, is the more is the majority of the population in the gray area like I'm scared of giving opinions on this matter. <laughs> oh god. Is it safe to say you don't like either? I think it is. Nowadays, yeah. US politics. A quip, phrase, or aphorism commonly said by Joe Biden, born nineteen forty two. Cadge. To attain something by wit or guile, to convince people to do something they might not normally do. Genshin Impact Cadged. Heaps of heaps of dough from all the peeps by giving them what they wanted. Waifu PNGs. <laughs> they mastered the markets with waifu PNGs. Cell membrane cytology, the semi-permanable membrane that surrounds the cytoplasm of the cell. What is the powerhouse of the cell? The mitochondria, not the cell membrane. <laughs> Chapfallen, crestfallen, dejected. <gasps> so this is a made up word or Non-official word, neologism on my part. I make up a lot of words. Credential a tree. Worship of educational, academic, legal, or regulatory qualifications. <laughs> a lot of news anchors take advantage of the credential lead that goes through the populace, that runs through the populace pretty deep. It's like, oh, we have this academic on. Here's my opinion. I'll give you a carefully phrased question. Now agree with me, academic. Academic agrees. Academic gives reasoning. And then the... News anchor's like, see, my opinion's good. <laughs> I mean, then everyone's like, yes, it is. The academic said so. They cited a source that we'll never read or look into <laughs> and see how, I don't know, how many stylized freaking facts. Ooh, it's all, it's reducted. Reducted, is that a, I don't know. <laughs> Making up words. Credentialism. Excessive emphasis on the importance of educational, academic, legal or regulatory qualifications oh yeah this I feel, this gets so bad if somebody people are obsessed with being called if they get the like their philosophy degree and they end up being called a doctor they're obsessed with their title like, oh i'm a doctor like i'm in night nursing school but i wouldn't people say i i wouldn't insist on people saying 
a nurse or I'm a nurse in the making. <laughs> you must call me doctor, please. Actually, unless I'm in the doctor in Doctor Who, that would be awesome. But otherwise, I don't care about credentials. If I'm ever the doctor, you got to call me the doctor. Like in doc If I ever played the doctor in Doctor Who, you got to call me the doctor. Dude. That's the coolest thing ever. But pff, besides that, ex ante law finance predicted forecast Faustian of or pertaining to Faust, especially in the sense of being willing to abandon one's principles or values in order to pursue knowledge, wealth, or other benefits. Kind of reminds me of that Rick and Morty episode where the guy sells, where the devil sells devilly items that gives people some grand thing then it turns out they lose a foot or something crazy. You know, a Faustian bargain. Heraith. So I got this word from a fellow nerd on Discord, a streamer lady. She was kind of fun to hang out with. She picked a very artsy word. And I was like, oh, that is a good one. A deep feeling or yearning for a home that cannot be returned to, no longer exists, or never was. Estomia is a real place, but I'll pretty much never be able to go there. Because I don't doubt I'll be able to afford to immigrate. It's kind of expensive. People talk about, oh, I'm scared of immigrants. You know how hard it freaking is to immigrate to another country? I'm stuck where I am, dude. There's no way I'll be financially afford to be able to move to Estonia, some place I really love. I mean, I wish. Like a dream. Like dream of Estonia. I don't know why I like Estonia so much. Like the flag, maybe, and then it snowballs from there. Mm -hmm. I mean, Estonia has internet in the woods and what's so cool. Leveler. A person holding a political opinion in favor of eliminating disparities between the haves and the have-nots. I mean, a lot of leveling these days is like taking away wealth, but I think when it was starting out, it was mostly... A level playing field where everything's fair like nobody gets there's like uh supposed to get rid of special interests you know in the u.s politics there's a lot of special interests logotherapy psychotherapy a therapy that involves finding the meaning of one's life overdetermined psychoanalysis determined by multiple causes in such a way that any of the causes on its own would be sufficient to account for its effect i mean isn't this like I mean, still, there's always branching causes of something. I mean, there's often, though. But there's always, like, a root cause, right? But the root cause has snowball effects, maybe, and causes all sorts of other stuff. So maybe if you find the... So it's, like, multiple root causes of an issue? But then aren't those, like, branching problems? There must be a root cause, right? Is there always a root cause? I don't know. What is... Oh, man. Pff, confusing. I should probably get more than just a definition out of this. <laughs> Plateness. A member of the philosophical school of thought established by Plato, a believer in Platonism. Wow, an eponym being defined by its eponyms. Thank you very much. I should use more. Not a very good definition. Prize fighter, a professional boxer. Prize fight has a more interesting definition because you kind of get the etymology out of the definition with this. It's like professional boxer. Okay. So why why is a b b boxer? Why, why? Because boxers competing for a monetary prize albeit before it was something else i forgot uh, it was like rank or status before probatio diabolica a legal requirement to achieve an impossible proof devil's proof rogernomics a portmanteau of roger and economics was coined by journalists at the new zealand listener by analogy with reaganomics to describe the neoliberal economic policies followed by roger douglas I think I came across this word in a J.J. McCulloch video, if I'm not mistaken. It's rather interesting. Saccharin, excessively sweet in action or disposition, especially if romantic or sentimental, to the point of ridiculousness. Sickly sweet, syrupy. So every K-drama ever, pretty much, <laughs> that falls, like, oh, it's a really good, cool concept, and then steeps down into melodrama towards the end. Like, oh, we have too much content. Oh, what else could we write? I don't know. Let's make amnesia car accident and then they're back in the next episode oh did our protagonist die no they're okay it was just take an episode to do that wasted episode Ooh, melodrama saccharin whatnot <laughs> i normally get drawn into these k dramas with like ooh, cool concepts taxi drama uh, revenge story and then it just falls off a cliff towards the end a lot of tv shows are way too long for their subject or whatever i think france and england have pretty good strategies like three long episodes and that's it that's pretty good like a excessively long movie sometimes 10 episodes like i don't know sometimes people just make way too much soda jerk a person who works at a soda fountain so like a diner you give kids the milkshakes you make kids milkshakes and whatnot you're a soda jerk that's a 
That sounds that word sounds dirty though. <laughs> Stylized fact: social sciences, a simplified presentation of an empirical finding. Pretty much every political pundit ever. <laughs> we don't have time to get into this, but <laughs> here's my reductionism. <laughs> You're welcome. Suggestionize to influence by the power of suggestion. Trotskyism, the left-wing political philosophy named after and based on the ideas of Leon Trotsky that is characterized by international socialism, opposition to Stalinism, the theory of permanent revolution. What, what, what would that even mean? Like, we're, There's never a government, it's always revolution. <laughs> and the theory of the vanguard party. Oh, I guess like you're always trying to, like, basing and thinking, you're always updating your philosophy. I mean, all I'm all for political homeostasis, I guess. I don't know. 